Welcome to the presentation on capital budgeting. This presentation will provide you with an introduction and give you an idea of how the calculation or calculations are made for the various measures. The main advantages and disadvantages will be presented, but not all of them exhaustively. Similarly, ideas such as average accounting return will not be presented here. Presentations and textbooks you can find first of all in a bookstore, but as well all over the internet, which will give you the detailed overview. Now, starting off with budgeting, let's recall what a budget is from our financial accounting courses. Quoting Wikipedia, a budget is a financial plan for a defined period, often one year. And within the context of a budget, you're going into the operational budgets, sales, cost, etc., etc., and financial budgets, which are developed. Now, capital budgeting is looking at longer term investments. So because of that, they're running over the period of a typical budget. And examples of that would be new machinery, new manufacturing locations, uh, new products, uh, opening in a new country, these kinds of things. Um, and what it requires is a multi-year decision. The purpose of the capital budgeting is to decide whether to go for a project or not to go for it. The characteristics of a good decision method are A, it's simple to calculate, B, it's intuitive, and C, it considers risk and the time value of money, which we've already covered in earlier portions of the finance. Now, what do you need? Well, first of all, you're going to need to have an estimate of the cash flows uh, that you will have receive and you have to pay. Excuse the cat. First of all, there's a timing uh, you've got in year zero usually is when you're making your investment. So it's an outflow of cash followed by inflows in, in this example from years one to five. The second thing you need for most of the decisions is a, a calculation basis for the cost of capital. In other words, what's the cost of money? We use that, those expressions, we use discount rate, we use the required return, all of that is uh, similar. And in this uh, presentation, we'll be using 10% unless otherwise spent. Now, the payback period answers simply the question, when do I get my money back? Hence the word period. Now, it's a measure of time, so of course, earlier is better. So the decision rule in the case of a payback period is that it should be less than some amount of time that we deem is required or necessary. Now, all you do to calculate the payback period is find out what the cumulative cash flow is and determine when you pass zero. In other words, when you come back to break even. Partial years can be calculated. All you need to do is assume a constant rate throughout the year and then figure out when in the year you hit your break even. Coming with this calculation, let's take an example here. Our example, we start off with minus 100,000. At the end of year one, we'll be left with 80,000 to recoup. End of year two, you can see 50. Year three, then you'll be at 10,000. And you can see you're going to cross zero and break even in year four. And we'll end it with 20,000. And at the end of the project, we'll have 40,000 more than what we'll have invested initially. Now, the break-even, therefore, is obtained sometime during year four. Calculate the fraction of the year. You observe how much is needed at the start of the year and compare it to how much you expect to get in that year. So coming back to this number, we need 10,000, and we will receive during that year 30,000. So that means the fraction of the year will be one-third, and therefore, the payback period is going to be three and a third years. The discount of payback period, the discounted payback period is there to deal with one of the major arguments of the payback period in that it doesn't account for the time value of money. So 30,000 four years from now is obviously not the same value as 30,000 today. So you solve it by first calculating the present value of all of the cash flows and then following that up with the typical calculation for the payback period, as we just did. So the decision rule is similar. So in other words, earlier is better with a discounted payback period. Using the same example we had previously, now we have to figure out what the discounted cash flows are here. 
and all we do is we're looking at the discounted value of 20,000 today. That would be the present value future value equation, 20,000 over 1.1. Again, we're using a discounted rate of 10% here, so that's 18,182. Following that with the same procedure with the other numbers, we calculated our present values here. And so you follow the same procedure and then calculate when we will get our discounted money back. So the discounted cash flow, you just accumulate. So in other words, you have 100,000, you're adding 18,000, you still need 81, add 24, you still need 57, etc. As you can see, we cross zero somewhere here in our last year. To calculate the partial year, you do the same thing as what we've done before. In other words, you take the 6,000 that's still needed, you divide it by the 12,000 that you would intend or expect to get, and you're about half a year in, which means the discounted payback period. Regarding the disadvantages and the advantages, in reverse order, the main advantage to the payback period is that it's, first of all, easy to understand. When do I get my money back? It's easy to calculate and it intuitively considers the elements of risk. In other words, if you have an, a risky project, you're going to probably want and need a, an earlier payback period. Now, the discounted payback period adds to that the consideration of time value of money. The disadvantages, however, are that both of them disregard how much you earn after the payback period is retained. In other words, in our project, had we had six, uh, a sixth year which earned 50000 it wouldn't make a difference to the payback period. It's also biased against long-term projects because the value of the payback period is to say, when will I get my money back? A long-term project like development of complex technological products are not really well designed for the payback period. Anyway, that's a quick overview of the payback period. And... After, after talking about uh, the uh, capital budgeting in the first place, and I hope that helped. Thank you very much.